if someone is unfamiliar because they're uh, only ever used Docker and worked with Docker, what is Podman? So Podman is basically a compatible application with the Docker runtime, right? I wouldn't call it a rewrite of the Docker runtime. It's a from scratch built project, came out of Red Hat, came with RHEL 8. The idea is that it's a container runtime that is fully open source. It's unencumbered by enterprises. We were able to make some changes to the way it works that makes it more interoperable. Is that what I'm looking for? And then of course, it gave us some control to add in features that maybe we couldn't have had with Docker, right? So 100% compliant with OCI, which stands for Open Container Initiative. There you go. Which is basically how the container images are formatted how you interact with them, things like that. So if you've got an image that works in Docker, it should work in Podman because they should both be adhering to the same standards. We made some choices on things like rootless containers. Nate mentioned we could do things that we don't do in Docker. Like, did you know that Podman supports singularity image format containers? I actually didn't know that. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. So <laughs> you can pull your singularity formatted images and run them using Podman. Yeah, cool. One of the big differences between Docker and Podman is that Docker runs with a daemon that runs at, at startup, which has its benefits. When the daemon starts up, it can start the containers that you want to start at boot, but it also means that it runs as whatever that daemon runs as, which at the time when Podman was created, that daemon ran as root. I don't know if that's still the case or not, because I haven't really touched Docker since I fully switched over to Podman. My point is that you can run containers as any user on a rel system or any user on a linux system in general that's running podman you don't have to do them as root you don't have to interact with that daemon as root you don't have to run the containers as root you don't even need the daemon to run which might lead you to well if there's no daemon how do my containers start at boot well that's because they interact with system you can literally make a container unit file that will start your container through systemd directly and you can even do that as a user, the same way as you would with anything you run with systemd as a user, right? Now, we're working as root because that's basically what we do on these shows because it makes things a lot simpler, but there's lots of documentation out there about how to do things as the non-root user. Yeah, if you're using rootless containers and running containers as a non-root user, except for attaching to a privileged port, they by and large just operate inside the container runtime. You can be root when you look at process status and all the processes being run by the containers, they're being run by this unprivileged user on the system. If you break out of the container environment, you would be running around as an unprivileged user, which is the preference. When interacting with network storage files and stuff, you're doing so as the unprivileged user rather than root on the system, which might come with other consequences. Which is really good from a security standpoint. I mean, why run a service in a container as root if you wouldn't have run that service directly as root? right? There's just no reason for it. In fact, you could take things that traditionally had to run as root and run them in a container so that if somebody breaks out of the service, all they have is the container. And if they break out of the container, all they have is that user you ran it as, defense in depth. So Nate, you talked about running Podman on RHEL and then said, really any Linux. Is Podman unique to RHEL or Red Hat flavors of Linux? No, absolutely not. I mean, most of the things that are in RHEL can run, I don't want to say on any Linux, but on any I would maybe generalize and say any Linux, but you know, there's always those edge cases. Podman's included in lots of other popular distributions. If you start looking around online for documentation on Podman, you almost always run into documentation from Arch. So I'm assuming that it must be popular there. Ubuntu will let you run it now. They're included in the distributions. It's a lot of places. Yeah. So yeah. And they mentioned Podman Desktop. I actually run Podman Desktop on my Mac. Yeah, that's a tool I'm not going to touch on at all today, but you should know it exists. Just like Docker has a Docker desktop, we've got Podman desktop that will do Podman in a GUI-based environment. There's also a plugin for Cockpit web console that'll let you manage containers.